Okay, let's see the recursive demo. Then start. Then. One more prompt. And let's try to understand how recursive functions work. I define a simple recursive function. Let's say for last, which take in as input. And now put I put in because I don't want to get a return in. And this function just print in. And what I want to say is. n plus then of equal one i just want to say print and then else so i'm calling the same function like that with n minus one one call the function first with n. Next time, this function will call back with n minus one. So this is end of the function body. So you see, when I now call last function with uh, three, 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 two, one, last. And okay. so if I call it like maybe five. 24, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. This, so when I call it with 3, it comes in, in 3, and this is false, and then this file will execute. This file will call with 2, then it print 2, back, and this is false. Come back here, and print it with call back to the top with 1. When it call by 1, print 1 here, then this file will satisfy and print last and after that it terminates the last code when it terminates the last code it comes here and terminates the second code uh, previous code and comes here and terminates the first code and then it terminates the problem so this is the this function for the last same function as the last table so because of that it is tail recursion and it only calls the same function, it only calls once. Because of that, it is a linear equation. It directly calls the same function. Because of that, we can say it is direct recursion, direct linear tail recursion. This example. So now we uh, take a uh, uh, greatest common divisor function and see whether how we can implement that. I define a function for DC, DCD, greatest common divisor. We take two input, x and y, and return also the integer. It returns the integer. And I say if this integer y match, you know, match a statement. First one is match zero. A zero. The GCD of, if this one is zero, GCD is this. So I return x. In case someone enter a number, if 
let me see if let's see here if the uh, point if x uh, f is y greater than x then gcd simplification may not work because of that i have to recall the gcd by setting these two parameters like this all other cases sorry i made a mistake here uh, i have to i have to type it back and yes. and this is s if greater than y that transform i forget this transform symbol y x and then i all other cases gcd is x and y equal gcd of y and x not y yes. so this is my greatest common divisor function let's call gcd with uh, phi uh, phi and 50 it return phi let's call gcd with degree 30 and 10 cd is 10 you see it works perfectly the recursion so it's also a tail recursion because this function gcd calls as the last day okay. this is only calls once but this one is the recursive calls the same function so this is actually base station base code function terminates when it y equal to zero right so that's how greatest common device works then uh, my next example is can we use greatest common divisor function to find it out prime numbers so we can so how do you do that i write a function for time which take uh, t from the user as integer and i take another integer for n but that is not going to pass from the user instead i give initial value for that by giving equal x so we can do that if you want we can give a default value to a function in the scala so there is a, a functions we can define with default parameter value so here i define a function time the first parameter is a variable which pass it from the outside the second parameter is some unknown field value when if the second parameter becomes two by default right so then it returns boolean value because if that uh, function is true if a given number is prime it returns a uh, boolean it is not prime it returns false again well for that i take what I do starting from this default to I increase the n one by one and see whether p and n has the factor greater than one. If so, this is not a prime. That's my logic. So I do n match them. And my base is is this. If If I, n is my to x, and I say if uh, p equal to x, it means when I increase n one by one up to the p, still there are no factors in common greater than one, then it should be a prime. So because of that, I use that as a base condition. And I say this is prime written 
Shoot. Then I call my GCD function like that. If GCD P and X greater than one. See whether it has a common factor which is greater than one. If so, this is definitely not a prime I return false. All other cases, what I do, I recall the same function, recursive. They call prime p now with x plus one. So this is my prime function. So when I call that now prime function, so let's say with uh, six, it return first, right? So when I call that prime function with the seven p, say two, seven is a five. So you see how my prime function looks like. So this is a recursive function, and recursion. And inside this recursive function, there is another recursive function, JCT. This is also a recursion. So after we implement a function, it doesn't matter recursive or not. We can call it and we can use it. So I have asked you to write a function which take this like that fine sequence and let's say 100. So and enter this prime sequence function should print all the prime numbers from one to one. So if you say 10,000, all prime numbers from one to thousand. Can you write it uh, because you function to that? You can try yourself. I'm not going to demonstrate that. Right. This is about prime numbers. Now let's see our up. Next example on tail recursion. So, I implement a function called print n to n. Let's say I have a function called print n to n, which printing the numbers from n to n. So, I use the integer n, n, n and other integer m it just printing so return value i will any and what it do it recall the function if m Uh, n, we call the function is n plus n, n. We call back print n to n with n plus to 1 and n. Right? All other cases, like after I recalling it several times, what I do, I print. In. and close print n to n so i now call this function print n to n by using uh, i to 10. this is for 10 9 8 7 6 5 so you may not see it's Correctly because it's right in the same line. May I change that a bit so you can understand? I write, write the function in 10 n. So, if, in case it less n is less than m, it calls the same function by increasing the value n by 1. So, that means because this is well, in this function, first of all, is it's recursive. So this function do call the same function without completing its first step. 
So then finally, there is a print group in function available. And then obviously, cross the function. Then I call in like uh, in, in m2 n n to n actually it's when i call that it's not printed n to m it's printed from m to n right so that will 10 9 8 7 6 5 so you might accept it to print 5 6 7 8 9 10 no it's reverse why it happens as i mentioned let's say we call that with 5 and 10 so first call will go with 5 and 10 and check phi less than no equal 10, it is correct. So same function will be called back with 6 and 10. Then comes here, check it is correct, same function will go 7 and 10 without completing. So then it comes back and check again the same function will go 8 and 10, then 9 and 10, and then it goes. 10 and 10. When it calls the function with 10 and 10, so this part is false and it may not call it back. Instead, it comes here and print 10 on the term. So we get 10 on the term. So after complete the last call, you remember it called 10 and 10 without completing. So it Going to complete its previous goal. So that means it went 9 and complete its previous goal. So after complete that, it complete the previous goal, in previous goal, and so on. So we will get the numbers in the reverse order. So we get the opposite results if we put print here. So this is kind of head recursion. So we can do 10 recursion if you want to get 5 to 10. So for example, so let's say I rewrite this function like that. So I say print 10 and then do recursion. This is still recursion. Right? Then I call this n to m. You see it gets 5 to 10. So I see the difference between these uh, two functions. So this function, recursive function, do the recursive call here. That means it interrupts the completion of the function call. You call the same function without completing. And it call it like that. So after it finish, it return back. And when it returning back, it print this value in. So that's why it put 10, 9, 8, 7, 5, 6, 5. So if you move that as a first state expression and move to the bottom and change that as a tail recursive function then what happens it comes here print the number and recurse so when i call it like this it print five two recursion six two recursion seven eight and ten after that there are no recursion it just terminated because there are no statement after this there are no statements after this. So it just terminate, terminate all the function it calls. You can clearly see this if I do this modification. Let's say I print this and then recall that. Maybe after that also I print something, let's say print L L. Let's see, I put a star here. Uh, maybe I print n here, okay, so that's much better. I print n two times. Before call, recursively, and after call it recursive. So then the recursive call is not a detail, so this is kind of non tail recursion. Right? So now I call that, you see. You may see an interesting result. So you see, when so 5, 6, 7, 8, 10, call it, 
like that. So in the after last hole finishes, it coming back. So when it coming back, it start printing from 10 to 5, 10, 9, like that. So this this 5 to 10 will print by this hole and 10 to 5 will be print by this. So I think with that you can understand how this recursion works. And one of the famous examples of the recursion is the power function and factorial function. Let's see how do you write a function power. Power function takes place and kind of like the part we want to multiply. So we say like x to the power y, x and y common part and the base part x and so I go for and take it as integer, it's return 92 values. What I want to do is say it's y man. A zero, any power to the zero, you know, it's one. If you have zero, it's one. So the power zero, it's actually one. So I return that. So any other A zero. So general definition is in other cases, it is X. Multiply of y minus one. Right. So what it says, power to the power three, for example, is equal to multiply to the power two. So that's what we say. So I type uh, to the power three. So it's eight. Maybe it's power five to the power eight. Thirty-nine thousand. Uh, Three hundred nine thousand. Two hundred sixty-five. So it works. Let's take this example. Score power function is 2 and 3. 2 and 3. Initially, x and y equal to 2 and 3. Comes here. y is not equal to 0. So this part is not the same. And comes here, all default case. Default case is all the power function again with 2 x multiplied 2 and y minus 1. That is 2 and 2. So it's go back and it's not equal to zero. Then it goes back x multiplied two and one. Then it comes here back, it goes x multiplied two and zero. So when it called power function two and zero, so y is equal to zero because there is written one. So in the last power hole, we return with one. And then answer for last hole of this power x y minus one, that is two zero is one. So then it multiply this return value one with x. So x is two, answer is two, then it terminate. So when it terminate two, then it take the answer and complete the next previous code. Two multiply two, it becomes four, and then like that. Then two multiply, Four multiplied two is become eight. So that's how we get it eight. So even though this is four at last, it's not a regression because there is a calculation to be done after this function terminates. So that's how power function works. Similarly, everybody use a factorial like the example for regression. 
So if I don't show that, it may be not good. So I'm writing a big factorial recursion function. If I want to calculate factorial n, so this is how it should return n. I have like a, a x, maybe an x uh, match. Uh, I do like case one. Huh? This factorial one is actually x. Maybe any other cases? Uh, factorial value is. Sorry, I made a mistake. So, if I start there, I say factorial n. So, I say x match like that. Then, case 1 is actually x. Then, default here is this. Basically, x multiplied factorial x minus one. X. Hmm. So let's put like that. Case one is this. Case zero. Actually, I if if I want to, I write that it should say case if x greater than one. But since I use default, there are no x defined, so that's why it returns zero. Instead of x, I use n here. So in other cases, my say n n minus one like this and then return sorry in the first time I was writing the mistake it should be n there so maybe I write it some other way maybe like that without using this case so that much simple I use ink I say if and equal one return as I call n multiplied factor n minus one. So I count if X match case, <laughs> I use simple if else to do so. Factorial function, I define a factorial n, and if that n is equal to 1, I return 1, else I return n multiply factorial n minus 1. So when I call factorial 3, it's return 6. 1 multiply 2 multiply 3 is 6. So when I call factorial 5, return 120. Can you change that factorial function to the addition of those four numbers from 1 to 8? Yeah, you need to change it. It's very simple, no? Let's say we want to write the same function for get summation. So I can say maybe sum and say if n equal to one, sum of these numbers one to one is one, 
and some of these numbers are twenty plus some of n minus one. If some of has the sum of n minus one, we add to the n, we get the sum. Yeah, I forgot to type the return type on the top. So if you implement a recursive function, you must type the return type. If not, the, this, when we type the recursion code, the system may not understand the return type of that. So if there are no recursions, we can omit the return type of the function. But if it's a recursive function, you must type the return type like here. Now, this one, then else this is what is okay. I need one, let's say, so I put two square bracket, that's not necessary. So we can write it in one single line like that if you wish. If some n. Return type is and how I define this function f n equal one 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 and n plus n minus one. One single point, we can do that. We have some difference. If we give any one, some of the numbers are one to any one. If you give like n, some is whatever the previous number add to the rest of the sum. So in for some two, so three, then some five, fifteen, like. 1 plus 2, 3, 3 plus 3, 6, 6 plus 4, 10, 10 plus 5, 10. So let's see how the recursion functions works. So you know, in the first year, four loops, while loops, and different loops, the recursion, we don't need any of those loops. So we just define the function. So that is the, how functional programs look like. We directly tell them what we want. We want to do this. We want to return one if n equal one, else we want to add n to the previous additional numbers, sum of n minus one. So that's what we want. So then how to do that is write the program. That is how functional programs works. Right. We discuss the factory and then we modify it to some function. So then uh, other interesting example is actually multiple calls. So what we call uh, a multiple recursive example. For that we are using Fibonacci series. Let's define the Fibonacci function then. So that's how it seems to look like. I say Fibonacci function okay, and take the integer, return the Fibonacci number. Right? If you use maybe match case here, I say match. There are three cases in the Fibonacci series. N, case N is if N equals zero, it returns in. The next time, N is N. If one 
then it returns one. Then the default is this x. So it's n because I use n here. N is x n minus one. Right? Yeah. N minus two. How the hell is it function defined? So, so let's see whether it works. Abonazi zero is zero, right? Define here in first case. Abonazi one is one. Then Abonazi two is adding these two previous things in the right. That means zero plus one. This one. So have as a three is adding previous two, that is one and two, that is three. Then have a four is two, one and two, add these two previous two, it gets three. Like that, is this is three and two, add together. Have a five is number five. You have a six is number eight. Let's say if you want to generate the sequence to maybe 10 first Fibonacci numbers, how can we do that? Maybe I if we need a function called F sequence, Fibonacci sequence, sequence, which takes some input. I do that. Let's return on it. What I do will be in this greater than zero. I call the same sequence with n minus one. And I start it. After I call it. And it becomes zero, I go reverse and I print Fibonacci one, two, three, and so on. Fibonacci zero, one, two, three, and so on. For that, I say print and my Fibonacci function f to n. Let's see. Okay, I want to put I think space in and say e n greater than zero. Else I say Yeah, I think you see I made a mistake here. If only a Fibonacci value. Yeah, it should fall on right. If Fibonacci is equal, n colon is equal. So I mistake. Then I say if n greater than zero, I call the same thing. N minus one. Other cases, I use this print and this one. Now we should make a mistake. So it's all and end. Put and type I put equal here. So that was the mistake. So when I want to print first ten numbers in particular sequence now. I call FSQ10. So these are the first 10 numbers of the frequency. So you see how nicely 
this uh, recursive functions works. So in order to show you mutual recursions, I will implement is even an e dot functions. If I want to do that, I will actually call it one after other. I cannot use from to do that. So instead, I have to uh, use uh, five. So maybe I go to my directory. Which is my home. Oops, it's my home. I then go to the desktop. Scala and Scala where I have my programs. So I write a function for maybe I wrote uh, even or, or maybe. Hmm, even which has a C1 function and it is odd function both. This is Scala. Right. A object. A file name I use. Uh, even or right. So I say the one. X. X. M. F. I define my S one function. This E one function is economic. All right. And return. Boolean value. So there I say in match case zero is two because it's an even number. Then if all case is I call a function odd number odd n minus one. I call odd number is odd with if n becomes zero if n minus is odd. So that's how what I say. If n become even if zero, all other cases if n become even if n minus one is a odd number. So I say if n minus one is odd number, n become even number. So I finish my is even function. So this is my is even. So I implement my if odd function. Odd function where I do an integer and return Boolean values. And you know, my even number is not a even number, that is a term. So I use if not if even, that is odd. So that's how I define an odd number. My odd number definition is I say if a given n is not a even, that is odd. So you see, it's a mutual recursion. Uh, it's, it's actually not a mutual recursion. It's, it's called this here and it calls here. Right? It's called each other. So that's my point. My point for you. I say like that. I call maybe is even 
number four. Number four. is hot is a boolean number say not is it If is what Boolean expected uh, not found, let's see. Let's see. See, I get true false, true false. So this is my program. Right? This is my program. And this is output. 
So you see, it's even itself. It's even itself. So it's even colon. What color is even? Mutual recursion. So it's also for you guys indirect recursion because it's not directly calling this function. Can you think about how it works? So let's take uh, is even four. So it's called here with n four. Comes here, it's false. So it's come to the four case and call is odd with n minus one, that is three. So then it's go to this function. Then it's called is odd with n three. So when it comes here, it goes to this and call is even with three. So that means it because you will call again here. It's even with three. So when it comes here false, then it comes here again and call is so with three minus one, that is two. So then it comes here is or two and goes here, then calls is even two. Go back here, then it still falls, comes here, or n minus one with one, it comes here, it's odd one, and go here, fall is even one, then to the top. And it comes again, falls, and falls here, it's odd zero. So it comes here, and take is what zero and then goes here and goes is even zero and comes here and comes to this place k zero and it is true it will turn true right so like that it mutually call each other So I, I, I understood that is kind of complicated. And sometimes you may get confused how we call each other. But if you don't think about how it works, and if you think about the definition, it's very clear. So here I say zero is a even number. If uh, any other cases, if that is n minus one is odd number, I know in this case, here I define odd number, in such a way, if even n is not a even number, it is odd number. So you see, where yeah, I put it here, but I won't. So I am not telling the system how to do that. I, I just define my functions. So then system defines how to implement it or kind of like code it or kind of execute it in which sequence and so on. So in the functional programming, you see, if we are telling the system what we want, how do you do that? It's out of our scope. So you see, there are a few lines we can tell the system what we want. And after it tells that, system decides how to code it, and that is error three, like less errors you might get because it's always written correctly. There are no for loops, no while loops, no if else kind of like, kind of no complicated structures. There are no thousands of course. So just single line, one line or two, complete a function, all micro functions. And we put those functions together to build the, the functions, another function and so on. Each function has only one small kind or only few lines. So if those few line function works correct, so the other function with you that is also correct. So like that, we will complete the program with these as less issues or the problems. When you move on, you might see such nice examples, like this is even and what. So try yourself, I will do some uh, exercises and try to learn yourself how recursive functions works. And when you see a problem, 
if only the body to add recursion. So the good programmers are brilliant with recursions. Okay, thank you.